Be sure and tell them Lord Mars sent ya. <laughs> In the 90s, we were just teeny tights. We went to movies and our bikes. We wanted to be DJs, but we were just teeny gals. So we went off to college and we remained. Hey guys, welcome to the Large Marge Sent Us Podcast, your favorite podcast where two sweetie sisters talk about movies that shape their childhood. I'm Sweetie with an IE. And I'm Sweetie with a Y. Big news, guys. I am nervous. I'm sitting across from Sweetie, six feet away. Well, yeah, <laughs> not even. About. No. Um, <laughs> at her kitchen table at her new apartment, and we are together podcasting for the first time in three months i was i was i thought we should talk about it because i was gonna ask you if we should even mention it yeah because i was worried that like fans might shame us for 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 this behavior but um we told them the plan of opening the circle did we yeah well i've never been a hundred percent on board let's say i have no choice now (laughs) but (laughs) just so everyone anyone out there who knows this was against my will but we experimented last week, and so far, so good. I mean, who knows? Whatever. You get it? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> yes. You might die. Hopefully yeah. you don't. But at this point, we couldn't. You know, I, w- I will say the remote pos- podcasting was going okay. It was going okay. But the problem was I was going back and listening to our past podcast where we were together, and I was like, I miss this vibe. I miss these jam sessions. I don't sessions. think it has to do with it. Sweetie likes me a lot less, so I don't think she agrees. <laughs> But I need her in my life. Um, And she needs me because we're sweeties. Sweeties can be. So here we are. Very, very exciting. As I said, this is Sweetie's new apartment. Um, Cheers to Sweetie. She moved like literally the week or two after like quarantine started. Week of, I forget, right? No. No, a couple weeks? Like three weeks after. So she like moved and then like quarantine. So she wasn't able to see anyone. But it's a pretty sweet place. She's loving it. I love it. Desmond loves it. Desmond we loves love it. it. Yeah, good good time. times. Hope it's good acoustics, guys. Yeah. Acoustics. 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 Yeah. Um, Anyways. So um, today we are doing a Disney classic, which I will say uh, was hoping once the Disney Plus stuff rolled out, this was going to be included. It wasn't. So we had to go around the old fashioned way, order the DVD. But no worries. We're here for you. This is Watcher, Watcher in, in the, the Woods. I think it's The Watcher in the Woods. The Watcher in the Woods. The Watcher yep. in the Woods. Okay. Shout out to my friend Jen who suggested this for us. This is dedicated to her. Hey, Jen. Um, Hi. So she uh, suggested it and recommended it, uh, requested it, if you will. <clears throat> and we're doing it. We're doing it. And it was her. one you had talked about before. It was. It, it was. Um, <laughs> and. Yeah, I'm so bummed that Disney Plus, I really thought that that um, network or whatever streaming service was going to have basically like everything Disney had. I don't know what their deal is with like either if they're slowly going to put other stuff on there or like yeah. what's happening with that. But this was missing and I know a lot of other people kind of complained about it too. So The Watcher in the Woods from 1980 um, stars Betty Davis. Betty Davis, we love you. But Davis is fabulous. Old Hollywood, very famous actress, right? Known for such classics as <laughs> All About Eve. All About Eve. Thank you. <laughs> Love that one. I have seen it. So Whatever actually, happened to Baby Jane? Yes, correct. Um, what other one? The other ones. The other ones. She's a very famous actress. Very um, cool looking, right? She is those like big. She's unique. Big uh, Betty Davis eyes, you know that song. That's for a reason. She it's these, true. Like, <laughs> she, true. She has these like saucer size eyes, and they're always like open, really big. Um, she's like, she's very different looking, right? I mean, not your traditional Hollywood beauty, but the bitch could act 
like it was her job as it was. <laughs> Obviously, she's very she's pretty old by then. I'm not sure when she died. Probably not much longer after this movie because um, she's pretty old in it. But she's fab. Um, also starring. Kyle Richards, who, if you're a fan of the Real Housewives franchise or Escape to Witch Mountain, another sort of creepy Disney movie, um, she's in that. Also about aliens. Right? And about aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spoiler. Yep. Um, Lynn Holly Johnson is sort of the main role of um, Jan. Jan. And she is, I, I think, most well known for this movie called Ice Castles. I don't know if anyone knows <laughs> this one, where it's like this figure skater who gets into a horrible accident and then. I believe she goes blind, but she like still wants to be an ice skater. <laughs> it seems like you're co- confusing no. the wild horses. Wild hearts I can't know, be broken. But it's legit. No, it's legit. I'm pretty sure she goes blind. Someone can back me up. I read the synopsis. They don't say blind, but I'm pretty sure Wait, it's blind. Does wild hearts can't be broken. She's blind or deaf? Uh, blind. I think you're mixing it. I, I bet you're. How can you be a? Why would it be a blind figure skater? It's so why random. would being deaf impact your figure skating career? Being blind. Well, maybe one. she didn't have anything like that. Maybe she like hurt her leg. I don't know. And how would you be able to figure skate? I'm pretty sure it's blind. <laughs> All right. Somebody get back Look to us. Look it up. Um, and then like randomly also the mom is um, this actress Carol Baker who was the the mom of the evil guy in Kindergarten Cop who like shoots Arnold but what Schwarzenegger was her at the role? end. The mom, the grandma. No, but she shoots him at the end. I don't yeah. remember that. Remember like the. Evil guy, Crisp, yeah, yeah. He Crisp or burns whatever. Burns the school library down or whatever. Yeah, and remember the mom is like obsessed with getting her grandkid back, so she's like this evil mom and goes with like a bat and like oh, beats. Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's so in other her. things too. I couldn't place it. I know. And a bunch of other yeah. random people, <laughs> British people. Yeah, love you. So I'll say that Disney has like a couple. I would say scary. Spooky movies, spooky. right? W- which ones would you include in that Spook. bucket? Um, probably Escape to Witch Mountain, a yep. little spooky. Which we're gonna do. Um, the No Mobile. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just the only one I could think about. Um, Mr. Boogity. Yeah. Although wasn't that during Halloween or like Spooky Emperor? Maybe this one was too. Yeah. It's like the perfect. I think it's a good Halloween movie. Yeah. I would include this in my Halloween totally. canon for sure. What about Bride of Boogity? We haven't done. Well, that we haven't done that yet. Yeah. But I think Disney Plus does have that though. Don't yeah. worry. They do have the boogity. The boogities. <laughs> um, Return to Oz, I'd say, is like in the Spooky is that camp. Disney? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely yeah. Spooky camp. So uh, super spooky. And Hocus Pocus. Hocus. For sure. po- oh yeah. Of course. Of yeah. course. Uh, yeah. I've seen like leg- like Ichabod Crane, like the Sleepy oh, Hollow yeah. cartoon. Spooky spooks. Um, and what else? Because I like read this list. Um, I don't know. Some There's some like Disney stuff, other Disney stuff too. Ernest Scared Stupid. Just <laughs> like, I don't think that's Disney. Um, but yeah, so my recollection of this when we were little is that this was like a creepy movie for kids. So it was probably the scariest thing I could watch like when I was a child. As we've talked about many times, I was like scaredy, scareders in person up until probably like the last five years, terrified of anything like horror or spooky. So this was a big deal for me, this one. And to watch this as a kid, I was pretty freaked out. And I'd say like for an 80s movie, it is pretty. pretty I thought spooky. it was pretty spooky. Yeah. A lot of, yeah, got good little jumps, but overall some, some pretty arresting images and um, just, you know, you can't go wrong with a creepy pale white girl in a blindfold in a mirror like really so effective very scary also Um, creepy old lady always creepy always creepy and she grows on you but she's still like i just yeah i just wanted her to like smooth her hair down yeah just a little just a bit um i think you need some (laughs) v8 hot oil treatment (laughs) hot oil treatment (laughs) good one good one yeah (laughs) the rage was it hot though so what you used to do it was like oil that came in like a little plastic yeah, thing and you would that. put it in a, a cup of hot water and like <laughs> heat it up and then put it all over your hair. I don't oh, know why yeah. heating the oil made it like that much different. You don't have to heat it Lowers up Lowers the viscosity. Um, cool. Uh, <laughs> do you? Yeah. Um, good times, good times. Good time. V8 hot oil. You were saying? Oh. Um, <laughs> anyway, so yeah. So like this was probably the most scary thing I watched and I remember it being on the Disney Channel a couple times um, as as one I feel like mom maybe even talked about it or maybe even Liz I don't know 
And there's just one scene I remember. And when I saw it today, I, it was one of those moments where I just like was transported back, like just that little bit to watching this and being like, oh, it's the scene where she and you were out of the room when they did this. <gasps> but she like sees something outside and it's like these lights basically and puts her hand on the window and the hand, the window breaks and her hand gets cut. I saw that. Yeah. Oh, you did. OK. okay. Um, it freaked me out. And it still kind of <laughs> did. So you made you never want to put your hand on a window, probably. Well, it made me think about it every time I put my hand on a window. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'd literally never heard of this movie. Uh, I mean, I'd heard of it because I, you had, you kept bringing it up. Um, I forget why. You'd just be like, remember that movie, Watcher in the Woods? Watcher in the Woods? <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Betty Davis? Ch- Betty Davis. Child scary movies. And you know, the way that you like, try to get me to remember things is that you're like convinced that I do, <laughs> that I do remember. Totally. And you're like, you know it. Betty Davis, come on! I, know. I start like saying details, and <laughs> yeah, I'm like, "Come on, like, listen, putting the pieces together I for said you." I haven't seen it. <laughs> God, um, I don't believe you. I don't trust you. But I really enjoyed it, um, and it reminded me of an "Are You Afraid of the Dark" mm. episode. Even though there is an "Are You Afraid of the Dark" episode called something similar, which is "Watchers Woods." So I think I also confused it with that, maybe. And but this overall, I felt did have a very tonally similar to "Are You Afraid of the Dark?" That like kind of spooky ghosts slash aliens again. Sorry, spoiler. And um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, it was really fun. So again, bummer you can't get it on Disney streaming, but you know, real good deal on uh, Amazon for this under ten dollars. Let's just say. So if you want to add to your, <laughs> was it nine ninety nine? Might be nine ninety seven. Oh. Um, if you want to add to your, you know, childhood favorite creepy movie collection, totally um, recommended. And I agree, like, this would be a great fall, Halloween, rainy day watch. Because um, it totally has that vibe. Mm, it takes place in crisp. England, and it's, like, yeah. all kind of dreary. And, you know, there's an old house. I wish the house was more haunted, but it's really not about the it's house. ghosts, man. I don't know. It's not really ghosts. They tricked Shh, us. Spoiler alert. I've said that, like, three times. <laughs> um... <laughs> Were you Anyways. disappointed it wasn't? Yeah, Me too. I like ghosts. Um, Aliens is like, uh, I don't know what it is about, like, <laughs> in my mind, ghosts seem like so much more realistic than aliens. So whenever I see like a ghost story, I'm like, ooh, this is spooky. This could happen probably. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. ghosts. Uh huh. And then it's like an, an alien comes in. I'm like, okay, forget it. <laughs> well, I think it is both equally likely, I'll say, ghosts or aliens. I, think, I mean, I think aliens are way more likely than than what? ghosts I don't know I, I just ghosts. the universe is so large there has to be other life forms I just want to see a ghost once oh in my god life. me too like, I was hoping when I moved too. in here I'd see, I get some senses and like yeah. so far not really sometimes I think people walk into the room but they don't yeah. but like that, that's it that could be it I don't know I mean obviously I, I hope they're friendly and I think you know most of them are but I just want it to happen so bad <laughs> I just want to see like one thing moving yeah yeah, I see one see, like yeah. apparition. I want to see. I want to see an apparition, but yeah. I know I'll be really real, real scared. Um, I'll let you know if it happens. Yeah. But you know, holding Same. holding out, Same. holding out for a hero. Um, a hero to the end of the night. Okay, uh, are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Well, do we need to say anything else? This is weird. We're like, hello. What do, are we? <laughs> I didn't. I I didn't find out too much more about. Oh, actually, I did. Um, so this is actually based off a book, Sweetie Book Club. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's just face it. We're never going to be able to do the Sweetie Book Club, even though we've had some op- we tried. opportunities. We got like a quarter of the way through. I read Indy in the Cupboard after we oh. saw the movie. Well, why didn't you tell me to read it? I could have. That could have been it. Could have pushed me. But this is based off a book, which only came out um, five years before this movie came out. So that's kind of cool. Hmm. British author Florence Engel Randall. Um, same plot. Okay. I'm assuming yes, still aliens. So cool, cool, cool. Mm. Um, and oh, and then the other fun fact I had was that Diane Lane, actress Diane Lane, was supposed to be the um, Jan role Ooh. that Lynn Holly Johnson. I think she even was in some of like the preview or trailers or something. I don't know like how much she <laughs> shot, but um, she, she might have been a better actress than yeah. this girl who, I'm sorry, was kind of the worst part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny. Um, it's. It's one of the, I mean, yeah, is it probably a good, bad movie? Maybe. But I just think that the, like, ambiance yeah. of it, or the atmosphere, is is worth it and, and, and balances out the bad acting. Yeah, no, I agree with that. 100%. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Well, uh, so I'll try to I'll try to talk about this plot as much as I can. But honestly, folks, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, we ordered some Mexican food. Sweetie brought over the DVD player, Sans remote, and can't figure out how to pause the DVD player without the remote. You can play it. You can stop it, but you can't pause it. And yes, I did try the play button. It did not work. <laughs> um, so I was like, shit, I'll just go. So I went and then I like got the food and then I'm like unpacking the food and then I'm like getting the food ready. <laughs> I missed like all this shit. And you Sweetie's, just missed the one And scene. Sweetie's in there like, you're missing some good stuff. <laughs> You didn't miss that much. And I, I, can, like, I can take over for that scene. It was a pretty cool scene, but it, it wasn't the whole movie. Uh, okay, well. And that's why when you said, do you want a watermelon roll? And I said, no, not until the movie's <laughs> over because I didn't want you to miss anymore. So you're welcome. You're right. Jeez, you're right. You're don't right, I need any right. credit. It's not my fault. My house is so big now. I have to, We can't be <laughs> in the same room at all times. Yeah. For the record, Sweetie's other apartment was a studio. So she'd be like, go into the kitchen and just be on the other side of the room. But this one is actually, you know, has some some room. Can't hear anything down there. It's like a deep, dark down hallway. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, let's do it. It's time for the Sweetie Synopsis. Yeah. Sweeties. I don't have any quotes. Karen. <laughs> Karen. Karen. Not Karen. Eric. Um <laughs> uh, the Curtises are a family who has uh well the dad's british he's a composer or whatever he, british. he was totally british i don't think he was british well to me he sounded <laughs> british <laughs> we'll have to go back and watch the dvd because we can um uh they're looking for like a country estate or whatever to to stay in while he works i don't know somewhere the mom writes children's books so it's okay. We don't need the coasters. It's the table's on the way out, so it's all right. Um, what was I gonna say? So they come to this mansion, or what do you call it? a manor? I think yeah. it's, I'd call it. I'd classify it as a manor. Um, and this little old lady in the little cottage owns it, and she needs the right people to occupy it. So the family goes. It's the mom, the dad, and then the two girls, Jan, who's probably like fifteen, sixteen, maybe. Um, and Ellie, who's younger, probably maybe 10. I don't know. I'm not good with that. I'm not good with that. <laughs> From like 8 to mm. 12, it's like a gray, it's a very totally. gray area totally. for me. Um, she's somewhere around there. So uh, they get there. Some spooky stuff happens already. Yeah. So they, this uh, is when our food they're arrived. just like looking at the house. Because as Sweetie said, the dad's a composer. So he's like, in England and must be doing something around there. So the family needs to live. They're all, they're American though. So um, the real estate agent's like, okay, it's owned by this woman named Miss Allwood. Like you'll have to get, we'll have to get, get the keys from her and basically like she'll have to like you. So they go and they're looking at the house and it's a really cool old house. You know, it's like an old, as Sweetie said, English manor. So it's like pretty fancy, you know, very ornate. Um, must be dusty as fuck. Yeah. Like, you know, crazy drapes in a place you'd see like um, a suit of armor decorating like the library. You definitely see a ghost. Big beds, you know. Yeah, yeah. Ghost very, very, too. Very haunted. Maybe so they're kind of like getting that vibe, but the girls have like a certain excitement about that stuff. I feel like they're not like scared of ghosts or anything. They're kind of like into this the, the, whole Yeah, scene. the younger one definitely is yeah. like a, she's like, I hope there's a ghost and like yeah. has like witch masks and collects like yeah. scary things. She's, she's, she's awesome. I love her. Pumped. So um, Jan goes up into the room and is like looking at stuff and she see, um, is like looking out the window and she sees this like flash of light in the woods and she's like, whoa, like what's that? And her hand is against the window and then it breaks in this one little spot, basically like this triangle and cuts her hand and she's like, ah, and like kind of starts freaking out. It's at this moment that the old woman, Miss Allwood, who lives next door to her house, um, comes in and is like, oh, like, would you like to live here? And she starts kind of giving her the third degree, like, are you a, a sensitive girl? Are you caring? Do you care about other people? Like, she's asking all these weird questions. And, and Jan's like, I think so. Like, OK. So they leave and um, they really like the place and they want to like ask if they can live there. Um, and the real estate agent's like, oh, yes, I think like you're going to get it. Basically, Miss Allwood like loved Jan. So you come to find out that Miss Allwood had a daughter and the real estate agent tells the family this. Um, and she has um, I don't know if she says died. She says is gone or something. I don't think I don't know if she uses the word died. And yeah, you, you figure out why later. Yeah. So they're like, sweet, we're moving in. So in they get again. We have this problem of a giant house, but you got to share a room with your sibling. 
Um, not sure what that's about. But so a couple more spooky things happen. Um, Jan sees an apparition. Yeah, this is so the, also the part in. I missed. She's moving this huge mirror in for her mom and she like puts it down and then like knocks something over. So she goes and picks it up and then looks and she's not, her reflection is not in the mirror. And you're like, she's a vampire. No, just kidding. Uh, that's another movie we did just recently. Once bitten. Yeah. Um, no, she's not a vampire, but this is a spooky mirror. So she's like putting her hand on the mirror and being like, what the fuck? Like, why don't I have a reflection? And then turns around and turns back. And in the reflection of the mirror, there is this girl who looks very similar to her um, with like a blindfold on and just like, like a, you know, you'd think maybe a ghost or something. And she's just kind of like, like, for the help record, me, help me. when I came back from getting the food and went into the room, I was like, what happened? And Tweety, you explained this part to me as like, I, I tried to, I don't remember exactly what you said, but it was like, she has like something covering, like you didn't say blindfold. Oh. And so the way you were describing it to me, I thought you were saying that just this part of her face was open, like a Muslim. Um, and so that was what I was envisioning like the whole time. A burqa? Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then when I saw it, I was like, oh, it's a blindfold. No, no. You explained it weird. So she gets like all freaked out and then um, the mirror like cracks into a billion pieces and then she drops it. So then the mom's like, oh my God, Jan, like what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what? Poor, like, Marcia Pring. poor Jan. Like she didn't drop the mirror on purpose. She's not a klutz. Like she saw a ghost. Her so she tries to vain. tell her mom about this. And of course, like she doesn't believe her. Who would? Who would? Yeah. So then a couple more things happen. We, we get, get the dog. We get, so we meet uh, this like handsome farm hand, <laughs> farm boy, Mike, um, and who Jam kind of is like flirting with. They got puppies for sale. So uh, they go over to the puppies. Ellie picks one out. And then she kind of like has this weird look over her. And she's like, what am I going to name it? And she's thinking. And then like s- turns like stone cold over to the window and writes... Uh, a name a word on the window and so jan comes over and she's like ellie what is it what's narek because (laughs) ellie had written n a r e k but she was writing on um glass like a window so it was backwards so it says karen which you can tell right away but they make a real point of like trying to trick you Mm. like you don't know what Narek means (laughs) do ya do ya it's like we know we can tell it says Karen for the record that's a horrible name okay (laughs) Narek is not a real name I don't know like she didn't name the dog Karen I mean that's the other reason it was so obvious is that like when you see that you're like oh it's gotta be Karen because Narek's not a fucking word or a name and um I mean it could be someone's name I apologize if your name is (laughs) Narek I don't mean it offensively but uh Narek weird fucking name but don't worry it's the dog's name now so Narek slash Ellie seems to have some kind of like special powers or like something weird um so she does that she did that she wrote the name on the window which like spooks the lady at the farm um and she's like <laughs> like it's like you know spooked <laughs> literally spooked and then um, they, I forget why they tell Mrs. Um, Al- Alwood about it. Alewood? Alewood. Alewood? Alewood. Um, about the dog? No, about the name. They're like, well, the- they go to visit her and the- she's like, what's the dog's oh, name? Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And Betty Davis totally calls Ellie on her bullshit and is like, what kind of name is Narek? <laughs> and I'm like, girl, I'm like, you're right. You're right, Betty Davis. You're right. So uh, Jan tells her, oh, it's Karen backwards. Like, she made it up. Karen? And, yeah. Karen? Karen? My Karen? My, my daughter's um, name was Karen. Yeah, so that was her daughter's name. And Jan is like, I would say in this movie, I was pretty impressed with her, like, people skills. Mm. She can, like, get people to tell her pretty much anything. And they don't know her hardly at all. Wait, you missed the part where she falls into the water. Though. Oh, was that? Shit. After they get the dog. The plot's a little hazy for me because I missed the beginning. It took me a while to latch on to You're, things. But the, the palm part's good. Okay, okay. All right. So, yeah, so I was like, oh, but wait. But why are they... At the- oh, they just they find this cool woods. Well, the dog runs away, remember? The dog runs away. This cool woods. Um, and then there's like this little pool. Was it a vernal pool, do you uh-huh. think? Uh-huh. Um, but it's a, it's really neat and shrouded like in trees, except for like the very like center part is like an open to the sky. So uh, she sees a f- like a ring of flashing or a ring of like purple laser... <laughs> 
beam is what it looked like to me and is investigating it and oops she falls in splat uh she's in the she's in the pool and she's unfortunately fallen right into the path of a giant tree or something that was in there so she's trapped in the branches so ellie's like freaking (laughs) out and mrs alewood comes and like has like this giant stick and starts like pushing pushing jan with the stick yeah looks like she's trying to push her down and she looks pretty scary because she is also has this like black i want to say like cloak on maybe <laughs> and is carrying this huge stick Listen. so she looks like a witch okay. right here's a tip for all you people who are trying to be helpful to people in need if your goal is to help someone try to be as least scary as possible <laughs> this goes to you old man marley and uh this lady because like first thing you do if you're like Little sis, little girl's freaking yeah. out, and because you're pushing on her sister with a big stick, and it looks like you're drowning her, you say, "Don't worry, I'm trying, I'm trying to, to help, help her get unstuck." You right. know, you say these right. things, right? Or like, or, "This is what I'm doing. I need to push her down so she can get out from under the tree." Right? Yeah. No, nope, doesn't say that. She's no just like, communication. Get away. No communication. Get away. Get away. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but she does save her, and then they form a bond, yep. right? <laughs> yes. So they go back to their house. She's all wet, so she's getting dried off, mm-hmm. and. As Sweetie was saying, yes, she's like very inquisitive and she wants to know like um, what happened to Karen once she finds out. Yeah, she had a daughter. Oh, because she finds out from the real estate agent. So she does ask her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and she tells this whack a doodle story about what happened to poor Karen. I mean, ba- I mean, we don't know what happened to Karen is the problem. So unsolved. She, mystery. Yeah. So it's like there was an eclipse. She, I mean, Karen didn't come home after for dinner or whatever or something. And, or I guess for lunch, because it was noon, because it was a solar eclipse. No, it was, it was really dark out there. Because it was a solar eclipse. Oh. And, yeah, because it was noon. Because okay. that's why I had to be the sun. Solar Because it couldn't eclipse. be the lunar Got it, eclipse. got it. Um, glad we figured that out. <laughs> I thought of it just now. Um, I, too, thought it was nighttime. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Thank you. It's not going to be like I'm stupid. I'm like, hello. Anyways, so she didn't come home for lunch, so uh, Mrs. Uh, Aylwood, like, runs out looking for her. And, oh, P.S., her, the dad, her husband, died in the war. We're not sure which one. Maybe the Korean <laughs> right? War. Like, Maybe what? World War II. Who's to say? So um, she runs off and remembers there's an eclipse. So she's like, maybe she went to the old cathedral to, like, watch it or something. So as she's running up there, she sees this, like, purple spark and then the church ignites like in the where the bell is and she runs in and these kids run out this these three other kids and she's like karen karen and she's looking all over in the house it's flames you can't see anything it's as soon as she's it's just overtaken so she doesn't nothing they couldn't find the body no trace of her it's gone is she dead is she out there what happened no one knows which is way worse than, well, not that I, I mean, I would know because my cat went missing. And <laughs> I remember having that feeling of like, I would have preferred if she was like yeah, died or know. something. It's the not knowing part that is like, she could either be out there like looking for me or is dead. Like, I mean, clearly this is why she never brushed her hair. She was very <laughs> like, so much unrest. <laughs> Ugh, and what was her first name? Did they even tell no. us? She doesn't even get a first fucking this name, you guys. Always. And she's known by her husband's name. Oh, yeah. oh sad. Um, so, uh, so, so Karen's like, okay, or just Karen's. Um, Jan is like, okay, oh, yeah. g- awesome. I know this story, but still, like, something seems fuzzy here, right? So she, uh, so life continues, and that's like kind of in the back of her mind, and weird stuff like continues to happen. So. The next thing that happened the dirt bikes? is the dirt bike thing. Yeah. So they go and watch Mike, hot new British friend, on his, he's apparently an amateur dirt biker. And I know they had dirt bikes in England. I, mean, I was thinking that too, yeah. but I was like, is that rude to assume that they <laughs> don't? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Um, so there's like professional dirt biking, you know, on like a little amateur trail, but still, whatever. So she's pumped. She's like, I'm going to go watch Mike. So she like grabs a sandwich and wants to like get closer to the action. And then her sister, Ellie, is like, Jan, come here, come here, come here. And she's like, what? And she's like, come here, come here. And she comes over and then this dirt bike comes like uh, the rider fell off, but comes careening out of nowhere and like falls right where Jan was standing. So you're like, that's weird. How did the little sister know? Yeah. 
And she's like, and she doesn't remember. Yeah. Well, no, she's like, Narek told, Narek yeah. said to come over. Like, Narek was calling you, not me or something. Right. Like, she always says it's the dog. I don't know. It's weird. Um, like, Narek picked her own name. I'm sure she picked Narek. She probably picked Karen. And then you read it wrong and she was pissed. Um, <laughs> she's just like, my name is Karen. Um, so, yeah, that, that happens. And then she sees um, Ka- the Karen girl again when they go to the fun house. Um, or the she sees Horse, her the horseback the, riding. Oh yeah! So then they're yeah they're like having this magical time, you know, English countryside horseback riding. What a, a dream! Looks God, nice. jealous. Um, and her horse goes haywire, and she almost dies again. What's trying to kill her? What is that about? What is that sign plot? I don't think it's trying to uh, kill her. It's just trying to get like give her all these signs, uh. right? Well, <laughs> coming very close to killing her every time. Yeah. Uh, but she ends up at the cathedral, which she knows that's where it happened, or she's... Well, now she does. Yeah. yeah. So she goes in. She's, like, looking around. She looks into this open coffin. Creepy. It's, like, stone. It's old. Um, and she looks in there, and she sees Karen again with the blindfold, like, sitting there like she's dead. And she's like, what the fuck? And then she sees this creepy guy who's, like, being weird with her and, like, trying to, like follow her and like run after her um and so her boyfriend mike tells her oh yeah that was a tom tom collie or whatever which is one of the names that mrs aylwood said the kids were running out of the church when karen disappeared so she's like tom collie that's like his name like and then she mentions the other ones i think and Mm -hmm. he's like that's my mom may um my mom's name mary something mary pierce yeah so she's like whoa so she goes and they talk to her about it. And she's still spooked again. Well, Mike does. Oh, Mike does. And she tells him the story of, or just tell, that they were playing a game and like something happened and then th- she was stuck in there or something. Um, but she feels terrible about it and is like, Meh. so then they go to the fun house. Yep. So then they're at the fair and they go to the fun house. And of course, you guessed it, Hall of Mirrors. And she stands in there, gets like stuck in like the really crazy one, which is just like uh, mirrors on all sides of you. Just like an it part two. Mm-hmm. Um, and like a That's thousand, a thousand other horror movies also. But um, she sees Karen again and she's turned, she sees her like everywhere and she's mouthing like, help me, help me. Um, it's crazy. It's yeah, it was a really effective scene. Spooky as fuck. So she comes out. She's like, Mike, Mike, I saw her again. I saw her again. So this, at this point, this is just too much. And, you know, all this weird shit's happening. And Jan's like, okay, I got to figure this out. Because clearly, like, someone is trying to tell us something. And between them, like, haunting my sister. Because, like, the sister's involved, too. Because the sister's, like, doing some creepy shit as well. So she's like, I got to get to the bottom of this. And I think the way to do it is to go and find those kids who are now like in their almost 50s probably who were in there with Karen doing this game you know so she's gonna she's gonna figure it out she's gonna yep. get to the bottom she's gonna do a murder she wrote mm. Jessica Fletcher style Ooh. get to the bottom of yes it. and luckily everyone's still in town that's the great thing I was about thinking that English I was like what if somebody side? died yeah exactly so all those kids still li- kids all those people still live there so she starts with um well she knows a little bit about the girl Mike's mom right so she's gonna find the other two guys so she does go and find like Tom Colley who is kind of like a weirdo so he's like the town hermit yeah and he's kind he lives in this little shack and he rescues animals that are hurt in the woods and if he finds a dead animal he nails them to the um the a s- ceiling, the <laughs> posts of the ceiling. I didn't. Like, I did, yeah, I didn't get that. He like said something like, "Oh, when I find them like that, it's so sad." Yeah, it's I'm like, like oh, what? Okay. So she gets. So she starts talking to him, and she gets the full details of like what happened that night, thirty years ago. So they went there to do sort of a um, initiation ritual. They had some secret club. Karen was going to be the new member. So they blindfold her. They put her on top of like a pedestal in the chapel um, on and it happened to be the day of this this solar eclipse and do ring around the rosy. So they all hold hands and they're like saying all this stuff. And then all of a sudden this. But that's not ring around. <laughs> ring well, around how, the rosy is the nursery, right? But that's how they say it. Ring around right? the rosy pocket full of But posy. that's what he said. What? He said ring around. He said ring around the rosy because they were going to hold hands and walk around her like that. 
He was so, saying weird things like, your life is pledged within our head. He was saying like no, weird shit. That's just like the symbol of like <laughs> ring around the rosy, holding hands what? and moving around. They said it many times. I thought it was like a, this, a secret initiation. No. I'm thinking like they were using like Wiccan spell books or something. They weren't singing ring around the rosy. They're just saying that as like an example of like what they were doing. So they did that and this like, um, it's like, uh, storm suddenly comes along, which is like what they think it is. And all of a sudden there's like fire in the belfry and the bell falls down and Karen they suddenly s- is not there. They scatter. Yeah, but oh yeah. Oh, yeah but, but Tom looks around. Yeah. Everyone runs away. Tom turns around, sees the bell fall, but Karen's like no longer underneath right. the, where the bell is. So he thinks that she was gone before the bell crashed. Um, which would mean that she's out there somewhere. Like, she's not dead, but where could she be? So uh, then she goes to the other guy, Keller. Mark Keller? No, what's his name? I don't know. Um, but he's a little different, and he's like, you're crazy. She's dead. Like, he's just more on the side of, like, nope, she, she died that day. We did a stupid thing. And I think they all have a bit of guilt because um, – when that all that stuff went down, basically they just ran. <laughs> and like Left. she was stuck on this pedestal with a blindfold on. They were like, see you later. <laughs> and so they had like this like intense guilt, I think, that they left her there and she really uh, did die. Yeah. What fuckers. Yeah. I was pissed. I was like, seriously? I know. She was just it's not like she was far away and you forgot. She was literally literally right yeah. in front of you. Oh shit, fire um, in the belfry, let's go. <laughs> like, why would you just bolt? I don't know. Karen seems weird. I'm just going to say it. She She like doesn't speak at all. She's just willing to stand there with a blindfold, even when there's like explosions and fire happening around her. She's like, this is fine. Um, I'm not sure about her, but anyway, so this is all very interesting, blah, blah, blah. So at some point I forget, I don't know. She puts all these like signs together and then somehow comes to the conclusion that, okay, um, there was an eclipse there's these people that did this circle thing. There's like these circles <laughs> that fell out of the window. So I think that means that <laughs> we have to recreate the ritual. Right. Um, and Karen will come back or right. whatever. It's and like Jan will... seems really dumb, but she really does put stuff <laughs> well, together. I don't know like, how she put that together. Because well. it was weird. I was like, now thinking about it, I'm like, wait, how did she put it together? Um, but so now the hard part is trying to get those people back in that situation. Tom, he seems like a nice, you just ask him, he'll probably do it. Um, but the other two, iffy. So she goes over, convince Mr. Keller. Uh, I forget how she does it. She's like, don't you want to redeem yourself or something? I don't know. You know, plays into that side of things. Uh, her boyfriend, let's just call him. I think they're boyfriend and girlfriend at this point. They were canoodling very close at the carnival um she he gets his they don't show how he does it but he's there with his mom who's like the most scared of all um and they push them in there and they make them do it or whatever but they don't want to everyone's freaking out so they do it and meanwhile ellie the sister is like possessed again (laughs) walking through the woods she had been possessed before we didn't miss that scene too where she like wakes up in the middle of the night and writes this thing on the mirror like do it again tomorrow and she's like saying all this weird shit so there's been some possession with her before so she's like also involved but she never like remembers anything right Mm -hmm. so yeah she walks into the chapel and is like saying weird shit (laughs) and has like a weird voice and um before oh before that though remember the dollhouse with like the song yeah. she says like other weird shit right and about <laughs> she's it like not being. about not care she's like not caring not caring and it's weird um but she says you we have to help Karen help Karen or something so now she's coming strolling into the cathedral and is like I am the voice of not Karen <laughs> <laughs> and um they're all freaking out and she's like you have to we have to help karen i am a creature from another planet <laughs> this is really what her voice sounds like i think we we switched places by accident <laughs> when the laser <laughs> when the laser beam struck the church we have to change places again oh, man. keep the circle keep the circle keep it gives me my circle. energy So yeah, like all this crazy shit's going down and um, there's lights everywhere. And and basically she just explains that when the eclipse happened, something like she, 
she came from her dimension. This alien came from that dimension and came into this one. And Karen got swapped up into the other dimension and she needs to go home. So the only time like that, that this could work where everything aligns again, the dimensions, I guess, is during this eclipse. So this was like the time to get Karen back. So then um, if you remember, so Jan is like recreating the whole thing and she's supposed to be like Karen in the middle of the whole like ring around the rosy thing. So then there's this like intense light. Looks like it's like sucking her up into what I guess is the other dimension. Yeah. And so Mike is like, break the circle, break the circle. And like oh tries to go in there and break it. But Listen. this time the people won't do it. And so they keep a hold and he's like kind of freaking he out. Couldn't he just crawl underneath it? Yeah, true. So he, so he like goes back and he like kind of loses hope. But then he's like sees her getting sucked up even more. He's like, I got to get her. Breaks the circle, gets um, gets her like out of there, and they all fall down. They all fall down. Oh my god! <laughs> and all of a sudden, Karen is back on the pedestal with the blindfold, just where she was thirty years ago. She's back. Time passed for Karen. She's home. Do you think she felt time, no. or it was just instantaneous? So. You know how in other dimensions, it's like oh my time god, is, just like in so the Pee Wee Herman one. I mean the. Um, the navigator yeah yep. flight of the navigator yep. just like that mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. you just blink and then you're in a different yep. place in di- time space wow yep. crazy so yes you figure out that uh the watcher was i okay so this is where some questions i think come about for me so the watcher was the alien but where was physically the alien in like the wind the light? And stuff oh, i think okay. like part of that maybe and then but karen being in the other dimension sort of like let's say poltergeist where carol ann's in the tv mike's totally an he's totally a ed what was his name no um yeah (laughs) freeling freeling yeah yeah yeah. like is like okay like don't don't drop this rope and then he drops it so that's how karen could communicate only like she was like stuck in mirrors though that was like how she was in the dimension and that's the only way she could like communicate was like yes. through these she was mirrors? in like a prism or she was in like a prism or something because then so. how would she how was she in the coffin was it a reflection of the water i thought it was I not it was, karen making like project projects projections and like making things appear because the whole you thing think it was is, the alien doing yeah that? Oh. that's why she's out was like it's not karen like it's, it's so then the alien was pos- but then the alien had the ability to possess a little yeah. sister, though. Yeah, she's an alien. She can do whatever it wants. Um, was the alien the dog? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He, she wrote, was like, told her, Karen, she wrote it in Eric and then fucked it up and she's pissed. Yeah. The alien's name is Karen. Right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not Karen. We don't know what the alien's no. name is. But I imagined the alien as like a part, yeah, of the atmosphere, like that kind of alien. I think it was, would have been more. It, I would have liked it if you had seen like what the alien looked like at the end. Well, you kind of it's like glowy and like okay. it's like plasma. I don't know. It's a dumb. It's a I'll tell you what it is. It's a 1980s alien yeah. um, on a low budget <laughs> Disney movie. They didn't have a lot to work with, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Karen's back. I mean, who wants to tell her what happened? And in the 30 whatever years she's been gone, um, it's crazy. Go, Karen. But um, Miss Aylwood walks in and is like, oh, you're back. So this is my question. Why was she asking those questions about Jan? Like, is she sensitive or whatever? Was her hope that she was psychic so that she could find out what happened to Karen? I think so. I think she was always looking potentially for people to move in that house. Because was, was Karen or the alien, whoever was doing all the speaking, like talking to Miss Aylwood ever? Or no? Did she get any of that stuff? I mean, she must not have because she didn't know like what was where she was. Well, that's my question. I'm like, but why Jan? Like, why did Jan have to be the one that like linked this whole thing together? I think her and her sister do have some sort of like spooky connection, or they are just maybe open minded enough. Maybe she was just looking for kids. <laughs> it's because they're that, American, <laughs> well, <laughs> or kids, or people that age who would be more open minded. Once you get to be an adult, you know, you tend to not like believe in that shit. Um, That's true. Yeah, then I mean, a little Mike, a little complicated. Yeah. You know, I kind of wish, I, like, kind of like Sweeties. Well, I I prefer ghosts, alien stuff. I'm kind of like, eh. Um, so I kind of wish it wasn't the alien side. I don't know, like, how a ghost one would have been. 
I really could have done the ghost. Well, I'm just, I mean, if time didn't pass for Karen, then where? When was she in like causing images and sending messages to people? She wouldn't have remembered that, unless she did remember all the years that she was trapped in this other dimension. Years. That sucks. God, I hope it was a blink of an eye. That <laughs> sucks. Yeah, that'd be terrible. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, a little confusing, a little weird. Um, but it comes together. Comes together overall. Positive. I mean, happy ending. Yeah. I like how it just ended with them. Just no like, one dies. Yeah. No one dies. The dog doesn't die. Yeah. Merrick is As soon safe. as we saw the dog, Sweetie was like, does <laughs> the dog die? Well, I was like, they kept showing the dog run off, and then there'd be like random bursts of purple lightning, and I was like, okay, the dog's going to get hit by the lightning, but Merrick never did. Wait, is Merrick a girl or a boy? Who knows? Girl, I guess. Gender neutral. <laughs> it's true. Merrick is definitely a gender neutral So name. since I haven't seen this in probably, oh, 30 years, um, wow, that's just as long as Karen was in the other dimension. Whoa. Um, when I would watch a movie after not seeing it for that long of a time, like I have these memories of a movie and this movie in particular, and I'm like, do they ring true? And they don't. Because the dirt bike scene, I could have swore to God that like something happened to the Mike guy. Like it was something happened to him. Well, it's confusing because they're all wearing helmets and yeah. you don't know who's who. There's that scene of that guy Maybe falling. that's why I was confused. Maybe that was Mike. He falls like backwards off the bike. Yeah. And then... Um, Maybe when you were, you got Sweetie Confusion and you thought his bike was the one that flew I over so. and exploded. I think so. And you thought he was still on it. And I do remember the part in the pond where she's like poking her with the stick. And in my mind, that meant that the Betty Davis character, Miss Allwood, was always bad. Like I think I like didn't remember any of the rest, uh, any of the other part of the movie that you know she's just a lonely old lady looking for her daughter, but just that she was like the evil woman, and I think I even thought she was the watcher in the woods. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how you explained it to me yes. um, many times. Like I, I you were like, like, I feel like you told me Betty Davis was like in the tree or something. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's no, I did not remember anything about an alien part at all. I remember the blindfolded Karen part for sure. The ending and it being an alien, absolutely not. Like, that came out of left field for me. It was, like, a brand new movie. I'm like, that is cool. But that's what 30 years, like, will do to you. And I mean, only seeing a movie a couple times and then, like, 30 years I, later. Yeah. I mean, I will say the, the plot was very obvious to me. Like, they oh. kept doing all, I mean, up to, I mean, I did assume it may not be ghosts. Because, remember, I mean, I even wrote it down. Aliens are ghosts. Mm. Like, pretty early on. Because there was, like, purple, the purple lightning is what killed me. Okay. And, like, these, like, lasers. It was, like a late it looked very like tech like 80s tech yeah um so i was like oh is this an alien because i've never seen a ghost do that have you no i mean did they open up another dimension somehow yeah and like then she just was in the wrong place in the wrong time and got like sucked in and the other person got sucked took her yes. place but like why do you have to create recreate it exactly as I it was know. why can't they just like come back why can't you just be transported I feel like that back made to that it seem like that like ceremony that spooky right. ceremony like opened a window or something right and they like yeah like they said a weird word yeah. and then like opened up the the ghost or the alien i don't know yeah um yeah that's what we were all hoping not so much but still i mean i give it points still again for its atmosphere i think it created a very good environment and everything was top top notch total yeah. i'd still live in that house yeah I mean, yeah, I mean, I need to dust it a lot. I just, I hate when people move into old houses and literally everything is, has like a cloth, a dust cloth over it. Yeah. And then they're just like, oh, we just take this off and everything's fine. <laughs> like, where do you think that, that, that dust goes when you take off that shit? Like, that's like all everywhere. It's on everything. Ugh, it's just 50 years of dead skin cells. Ugh, yuck. Um, but yeah. I mean, I didn't write down a lot, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, the funniest part to me again, yeah, the the main girl was not great at acting. Her only emotion is to yell, yes, at, people. To yell at people. So she would just be like, the other person would be talking normally in every every instance. I'm pretty sure we'll say like 97 percent of the time normal conversation from the other side and she's like mr keller <laughs> we have to do it as if there's like a windstorm constantly surrounding them That's but so there's not um hilarious though um so i enjoyed i enjoyed that and the other girl is like oh some of the times it, her acting is bad and sometimes it's like okay the little girl who who ends up being in escape to witch mountain and return to witch mountain or whatever and then you know the the real housewives woman um yeah, sometimes she's okay. Sometimes I'm like, ooh, like again. <laughs> I think, mm. yeah. I mean, probably not great writing. Yeah. Maybe. Jan, Jan. <laughs> I don't know. 
They were like kind of annoying, but <laughs> overall, yeah, good. The only other thing I have to say is that at one point the Jan girl is reading the Boxcar Children. Shout out to the Boxcar Children. I love that series. Again, not totally remembering. Obviously, I remember it was like a family of kids in a boxcar. No parents. <laughs> no parents. I think they only had one. That white one. It was like a white there cover was a couple. in like the snow. It was a series. Oh, I know. But I think I, I only own But like, what one. were the plots? What well, that's what I'm adventures? saying. I'm like, I don't know. They yeah. were solved mysteries or something, didn't they? Oh, they solved mysteries? I think so. Pretty sure. Yeah. I remember that. I just remember like, I love those covers. Like mm. those Babysitter's Club, like those covers were everything yeah. you could just like create a whole st- like the title is like stacy's new boots or something and <laughs> you see like this cover and you're like oh my god i bet it's amazing okay, don't get me started on the babysitter's club first of all obviously love those the super specials stop the big oh. white ones don't even talk about it i'll say i just we went to target last week and they had uh babysitter's clubs and all like um what I remember to be the original titles, but like all new designed, like new 2020 covers. I'm like, ugh, yuck. I don't like it, but I get it. it, I get it. But hold on. So then I pick it up and I'm ready to like dive into the plot and they were graphic novels. <laughs> it was like comic books. Uh, I was like, what the fuck? They know their audience. Kids today love it. Um, it's funny because now thinking, looking back, yeah, you're mad that they're changing things. But they obviously, I mean, they probably changed those covers. I mean, I don't know when those were written, but... They were in like 80s clothes. And yeah. so we were like, this is the normal thing. But like, no, everything gets updated. Nancy Drew, every. Um, don't get me started about the Judy Blum, like taking out the, editing the book okay. to like take out the pad references. Still, I mean, I go back and forth. I flip flop on that a lot. I waffle on the, the question of whether it's okay to change that. I think it is because I was confused as fuck for <laughs> a long period of but time. But why wouldn't that co- like create dialogue for you to ask somebody about it? You ask your mom and your mom would be like, oh yeah, that's well, then why not just say the way, whatever it is you in can't the time. rewrite history like uh, that. It's not <laughs> history. It's, it's the history book. of okay. menstruation Guys, pads. my <laughs> biggest regret in life is being at the Judy Bloom, um, her, uh, to had like an author's talk or whatever at whatever and there's a question and answer a question questions period you know people line up and then someone always comes and it's like how do you become a writer and everyone's <laughs> like Ugh. um anyway so i really wanted to go up there and ask a question but i hate asking questions in front of people i hate like speaking aloud in like large groups especially like this yeah. kind of environment so i would never do it in like a thousand and five years but the question I wanted to ask was how she feels. Does she agree with or feel weird about the fact that they change certain scenes in Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret to be more current with today's she must have to okay standards? Them. They have a scene where Margaret gets her period and her mom shows her how to like put the belt on and they buy these belts and there's all this talk about belts. And I was like, what the fuck is a belt? Like, where do I get one? Should I get one now? Mom, hello, do I need a belt? And she like laughed at me. He's like, belts are from like the 70s or the 60s or whatever. So now they've updated it with pat, like maxi pads um, instead, which is like current. And so Sweetie's upset about I it. I just don't think it's necessary and you shouldn't be like rewriting stuff. It's just an, an, an opportunity for people to ask about how things were. If it's yeah. an old timey book and they're they washing can- clothes on a, you know, whatever you used to wash clothes with, the washing board, whatever. Mm-hmm. What are you going to put a sick of washing machine in there so kids don't get confused? Wow. How are they washing? Cl- like it's a it's a, a, a place yeah. to have I dialogue. I think they're not giving enough credit to kids. Right. Um, exactly. And, yeah. It's it's lazy and I don't approve and I'm upset that authors would do that. Maybe it's like part of their contract. I don't know. But it's like you, you can't revise a lot of stuff. You can't revise movies. You can't be like, oh, wow. Like, I mean, they do. It's called a remake. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. OK, good point. But like that actual movie. Um you know, I just, I never feel good about that. That's the only one, like, part um, or thing that I know that they've done that. I'm, I don't know about other books or what else yeah. they've updated. But, I, and I understand cover art. That's, like, a whole different oh, ballgame. And, and that's, that's fine. I mean, okay. they do that all the time. They do that, I mean, they do that thing I hate with movies where as soon as a movie comes out, that is the yeah. book cover. And you're like, Do what? you remember, okay, this is my, wait, <laughs> maybe I'll just ask you first. What is your favorite Babysitter's Club cover or, like, babysitters club sub sub genre sub genre okay the only one that's sticking in my head again is the super specials (laughs) and it it was like the summer camp one oh damn damn it thought we had the same one okay mine is remember babysitters club little sister yeah karen 
the witch next door or whatever, whatever, and it's like that old lady gardening, and um, Karen's like peering over, like, oh my god, it's a witch. Oh my god, I was so convinced it was like the spookiest shit, but I read it; it wasn't that spooky. Yeah. Um, good times though. That's the one I remember. Oh, it's so good. I'm gonna look it up. I, I will say I've been now. I'm committed to because um, I went to a bookstore the other. Oh, when we we did Indian in the cupboard, and I got a bunch of those, and then I got a bunch of Roald Dahl books. And I'm going to use those as my bathroom books now. They're perfect to read when you're on the oh, toilet. Those are always my For favorite. these little bits, because you don't really have to remember, like, plot or anything no. like that. Oh, my God. It's amazing. So good. So I'm rereading all childhood, my childhood favorites, uh, chapter books, mind you. Like, I just read <laughs> Danny the Champion of the World, which is the Roald Dahl one, which I had no <laughs> recollection at all that that book was about. So it's, like, him and his father, they live in this little trailer. They run this gas station. And his dad is a po- uh, like a poacher. He goes into like rich people's fields and gets pheasants and stuff. And the way they do it is they put sleeping pills and raisins and then all the pheasants eat them. And then the pheasants like go up in trees and then fall out of the trees and they put them in a bag and run away with it. That's literally the whole book. Why don't they just shoot them? Because um, they don't have guns and they can't shoot on other <laughs> people's property. For some reason I thought you meant he poached for like they're like, well, I need three pheasants no. today. <laughs> so they get like a hundred pheasants. I don't know. It was the craziest plot. And I'm like, and I looked at my Goodreads and I had rated it five stars. And I'm like, really? You were just on a, <laughs> I love everything, Roald Dahl. Exactly. And I'm like, oh, I was like, okay. But I do remember like loving it when I was, I mean, there's, it's, it's nice, but I, it's not five stars. It's not Willy Wonka and the Chocolate right, well, Factory. You can revise, revise your I score. did. I revised it okay, to good. three. All right. Okay. Maybe four. <laughs> I knocked the star off with 20 years of age. <laughs> Anyway, Anyways. so good movie, guys. Anyone wants this DVD, send us a jingle jangle. We'll send it to you. I want to do like Sister of the Traveling Pants DVD edition because, you know, when are we going to watch these again? Yep. But good watch. Very, good very times. exciting. Yeah. Do you remember this movie? Do you not? Do you not know what we're talking about? But love us anyways. Come find us on, thank you, at Twitter, the Sweetie Club. <laughs> Twitter. <Whoa. laughs> Come thank Come find us at, thank you, Twitter. <laughs> I'm having a stroke. Oh my God, are you all right? Are you a, are you a possessed by the alien? Are you it's Karen? The alien. It's the alien. I'm not, not, Karen. not Karen. I'm not, not Karen. Karen. Uh, anyways, yeah. We're on Twitter at the Sweetie Globe or on Instagram at Laura Jamar sent us. Thank you, as always, for listening. Bye. Bye. Watch your woods, right, Barnett. Hey, Barnett.